hi welcome to my channel um, I just wanted to do a particular book highlight for this book battle for the American mind uprooting a century of miseducation by Pete Hegseth with David Goodwin um, I just finished this I this was just bought by my library this month so I think I'm actually the first person to read this because I looked to see if they had it and then it said it was on order and I guess I placed a hold for it because it was within the system and so I think I was like the first one to get it, but I only had two weeks to read it because um, it was on reserve for somebody else next. Um, but I highly, highly recommend this. This is not just for homeschoolers. Um, he's not actually uh, advocating for homeschooling in particular. He is, he's going back through the history of uh, the, over the last more than 100 years, kind of the uh, people who have called themselves progressive, even from way back then, even like 1900, there were people who called themselves progressives and they had a certain, certain ideas um, about how things should go. A lot of it was they wanted any semblance of Christianity or Judeo-Christian worldview um, out of, you know, education. That's, that's how they control it. Really, they just wanted it out of people's minds at all. Um, but he talks about the, uh, the rich you know, hundreds of years, uh, going back centuries, yeah, of uh, rich, he calls it uh, Western Christian paideia. He uses this word uh, many times in his book, um, paideia, it's P-A-E-D-I-A, -I, -A. I believe that's right, and he tells you how to pronounce it, but, uh, and he said the closest English, um, there's not a direct English translation, it's a, I'm gonna forget, it's either a Greek or Latin word, <laughs> Um, but the closest idea, short uh, version of the idea is enculturation. So it's uh, reminiscent of uh, Deuteronomy 6, 8, I believe, where it's, you know, talking about how parents are to uh, teach their children, you know, as you go by the way, as you sit in your house, um, when you rise up. So all through life, what kind of culture? So it's not, he, you know, he's talking about uh, pedagogy or teaching and how we've reduced we have reductive ideas. We have certain words that we use, but we've reduced them down to a very simplistic meaning. And that's not all there is. There's so much more than just like, did you learn, you know, this fact? Um, we're not trying to make little robots who will spit out the correct answers and who are good assembly workers and, you know, fit, fit, the little, fit them to their widget job and train them exactly for that. There's so much more to life. And uh, that's why I'm a proponent of lifelong education too. We shouldn't be done learning and growing in this beautiful world that God has made for us to explore um, and to uh, work in. So he talks about that. The first section of his book, like the first few chapters are uh, ent entitled uh, The 16,000 Hour War. And he's talking about all of the hours that we send our kids to school to be enculturated by other people who a lot of times now do not have, they, they don't agree with us. So we're doing damage control at home after the 16,000 hours plus travel time, plus homework time. We're doing uh, damage control on the little bit of time that we get to have, but we don't know. You, know. you know, if you send your kids to school, the classic thing that you ask your kids is, what did you learn at school today? And the answer is, I don't know. And that is exactly it. They don't know what they learned. How could they even relate it to you? Um, how could they tell you in a few minutes what happened to them eight hours a day, every day for 13 years, if you do K through 12? Um, not to mention that um, some people want to add preschool, government uh, preschool to the, make it, make it more, you know, add on those hours. I'm actually not sure when he says 16,000, I'm not sure if he counted kindergarten or not, but that's you know, that's, it's, it's a lot of, it's a lot of schooling and, um, yeah, it was just fascinating. So who's Paideia? And he actually had a, um, a quote from a progressive. Okay, here we go. This is, um, let's see, he talks about John Dewey. Uh, he talks about so, so John Dewey, that's a name you recognize, Dewey Decimal System, he helped found the first humanist society of New York. Um, and it says Charles Potter was its first, uh, or was its president. And here is, here are some quotes from him. By freeing religion of supernaturalism, it will release tremendous reserves of hitherto thwarted power. 
Man has waited too long for God to do what man ought to do himself and is fully capable of doing. And he also wrote, uh, is quoted as saying, the chief end of man is to improve himself both as an individual and as a race. And so this is, it, it mentions the, the Christian catechism, the chief end of man is to glorify God and enjoy him forever. So, you know, it's a humanism quote there, kind of the idea that we can make a utopia ourselves. We don't need any help. We can do it ourselves. Um, but then here is the one of the most telling ones. He wrote this. What can theistic Sunday school, meeting for an hour once a week, do to stem the tide of a five-day program of humanistic teaching? So this was their goal. Um, he talks about, it's so interesting, you know, on this cover, he's got uh, sort of the Pledge of Allegiance is uh, what it looks like. It looks like the child's being erased. Um, <clears throat> but he talks about some of the things that people are, the parents are outraged about now or outraged or confused about, but a lot of them were set up as dummies to replace prior things. So there, there's, it's, it's just such an interesting history. So even like the Pledge of Allegiance, that was what the progressives set up to replace prayer in schools. So they got rid of prayer and, and changed it to this. And it was something people liked. So there's nothing like just horrible about the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, but it is a pledge that comes under uh, other obligations as a Christian. Um, you know, we have, we have an allegiance to God first. We must obey God rather than men. Um, so, but then the progressives didn't want to keep this nationalistic, patriotic thing. It was just a placeholder for, you know, their paideia. So they're trying to push their own paideia. Um, he, now he calls that cultural Marxist uh, paideia, and he talks about cultural Marxism. And um, <clears throat> whether we know it or not, or not, that's what drives a lot of things in our culture today. Um, so that's very interesting to learn about. Um, and then he talks about the Western Christian paideia. And it doesn't mean that every person is a Christian. You know, he recognizes there have been, there have been, uh, societies that are built on a Judeo-Christian foundation. And of course, plenty of the people in them are not necessarily Christians. It doesn't make you Christian to learn about this worldview. Um, but so people can be part of this with recognition that this is a better way. This is the right way, even if they themselves are not Christians. Of course, it's wonderful if people do become Christians. Um, I want that for, for everyone. Um, but that's a, a personal issue. That's not something that like schools or, or anyone can make anybody be a Christian. That's not a, a thing. Um, <clears throat> and it's still, there are natural blessings. And that's what the Proverbs is full of natural blessings that come from living the way that God tells us to live. And those are open to everyone, not just to Christians. They're a common blessings, common grace to mankind. Um, <clears throat> so this book was very good. He talks about he talks about problems. He talks about history. I had heard some of it, but I learned more in this. I enjoyed it. it in the end, he talks about um, <clears throat> uh, kind of a game plan where to go from here. He does not think it is worthwhile uh, putting your kids in government compulsory schooling and uh, trying to fight at uh, fight from the low ground. He, he said the progressives they own the entire high ground on this. Uh, debate. So when we go to, if you, if you go to like school board meetings, it does almost nothing. They can just ignore you. There's, there's really, I guess you can run for school board, you know, that's, that's something. Um, but in the meantime, this, that's going to have to be a side fight. We don't want to be doing damage control. We want to be giving our kids beautiful and wonderful education and um, cultural, that enculturation. I love that word. Um, paideia, enculturation. <coughs> You know, education does not end with the formal, you know, ours is formal morning lessons. So it's two and a half hours in the morning that our education is all day. It's everything. It's how we how we talk to each other, everything that we talk about, um, how we treat each other, you know, how we live. It's everything. And uh, it's a beautiful thing when you do homeschool and you get to have that uh, special close bonds um, and you're not losing all those hours to someone else. So, yeah, I just wanted to highly recommend this and just highlight it. It was very good. Yeah, I'm still, I'm, I'm trying to decide if I'm going to buy it um, and like read it a second time and, and make notes in it. But yeah, all right. I hope you all enjoy that. <laughs> Bye.